Hey guys, Kanani here with Little Honeybee Homeschooling. So I kind of just wanted to update you on what's going to go on with my channel here in the next couple of months, hopefully all the way throughout the year, um, is what I have planned. Um, so I will have um, some collaborations going on with a couple of groups. If um, those will, I'm going to try to put everything in a playlist so all collabs will be in one section. Everything that I do with five in a row will be in another or with any other like single division. I would try to have those playlisted so if you're only interested in certain parts of my channel that's okay now so what i'm going to be doing is i am a five in a row person we have been five in a row since for two years it's gonna be our third year going on five in a row um my son was homeschooled like all his life because he did pre-k kinder here we he didn't go to school he only went to public school for about two weeks and that was in first grade and then we pulled him back and um he's been home since um this is his third year so i want to just give you a little heads up um five in a row for us um i don't always i have my own facebook page for um our homeschooling and i do post on there like the different things that we're doing throughout the week and then i also of course have my blog which on there i will actually give you a more detailed on how we actually did certain things now those are going to be my two platforms I'll use but now I'm going to go ahead and use YouTube as well um, to show you like a quick video slide of what we did so you can see it that way. Um, along with that um, I will also be doing the readings to the books that we will be rowing this year. We are doing volume three this year and so those will be in a playlist again on their own and that's as we read the story for those of you who can't find the books at your local library and would like to use a video you can definitely um check them out here on my channel so before we get started like we already are started but just so you want to know what is five in a row because like i said last year i was not too um i didn't stick with it as far as showing y'all like we wrote every week but i didn't stick on it as providing for y'all this year my goal is to show you along five in a row and exactly how you can accomplish schooling with five in a row and what other things we may be using but we don't have to be using to school with five in a row so you may be asking what is five in a row and this right here is five in a row um they are manuals there is three in the five in a row actual um category here there's before five in a row which is for your pre-k and your kinder and then there is um beyond five in a row which was um ages nine and up so i guess grades four and up okay and i only have volumes one and volumes three my volume um two that i'm sorry earlier i said volume three my volume two is the one that we will actually be doing this year so just so you can get a look at volume one here what five in a row is and again on my videos that we have coming up um for our weeks that we will be rowing some i will row one week and some i'll row two weeks i would definitely let you know in the videos and i'll show you exactly how we row with it as you can see i mean i have lists here because my library has to order certain books from um other libraries in our libraries but this was like two years ago so they might actually have it now because our library has been pretty good at it so they'll give you a book list and what you'll do is once you figure out, you don't have to start with the first book. You can start in any order that you want. So if you can't find one book, start with the one that you um, can get first. But let's see. It does give you suggestions. As you see, it will let you know why social studies, why language arts. Give you again the cards here as like, you know, for vocab, language and stuff, which I do. I like to do those. And I do them really easy and simple. Um, I actually don't even print them out or anything. Here again, it gives you samples of how you can use math in your home with this. It doesn't have a really strong math um, or the connection, but it can definitely be applied. Um, my kids, again, are uh, third grade and younger. So honestly, first grade, second grade, we did a lot of apply math. We hardly did. We do have the Horizons curriculum, but we hardly, um, it, we hardly did it. It was a lot of applied math. Okay, so here's the story about Ping, which is going to be the first story in the manual. So you'll get the title, you'll get the author, the illustrator, the category, and what it's about. Um, some people don't like to read the book ahead of time. I like to read the book ahead of time. Only reason why is I do my preparing on Sunday, and like I said, like the sample showed us about the vocabulary words. I actually do those cards for the stories. Um, so like here we have social studies. 
and so discouragement ping learns on in the page i don't have the book guys so unfortunately i can't show you the book but you can go in through this whole thing and it'll tell you like pretty much word by word and this is going to be discussion um this is going to be discussion especially for my children because they were like i said they were younger this was all discussion Geo um on the geography ugh, geography i'm sorry about that geography part of it on china because it is china it's a story about ping we did um again discuss the Yangtze river we did locate it on our map i do recommend you get a map i got a united states map at the dollar tree the other two maps i got i purchased through um what was it called uh, little passports so i really like those but again you can you'll definitely discuss this and it also it gives you suggestions here um right here let's see you might say grandpa is 400 miles away the yancy is driving like grandfather's house time so you that is the way you can use math right there. You can actually do that if you want to measure the Yangtze River, measure it in miles, and then show it in increments of different from miles to feet. That's definitely something you can do. Again, that's if you have older children or if you have younger children, you can just discuss with them. What I do for geography is I like to get the flag um, of China. So for China, we did the flag of China. And my kids, I'll give them either a basic um, paper as printer paper or we will get a cardstock. But more than likely, majority of the time it's paper like this, the printer paper. And um, I have them do the flag. And so for each story, we have a flag of the location or whatnot, the story we're studying. And then see, so you'll continue with social studies. So this could be Monday. So Monday, you can do social studies. All Monday, just do social studies. And then here's culture. Um, they will give you suggestions on what you can do. Have a rice lunch, which is an awesome suggestion. We did it. We did fried rice. Um, we did get some egg rolls. We got things like that. And you don't have to order them from a Chinese restaurant. You can if you want to. But local grocery stores do have those things. So we made it. And that's what we had during lunch. Um, during this time too, say um, you wanted to, say you didn't want to do the lunch um, during social studies or you want to do the Chinese theme um, throughout the whole week like Monday you can do rice Tuesday you can just do egg rolls Wednesday you can do noodles every day can be a different you don't have to serve them all on one day and with that being said you start off by reading the story to your children and um, then you start discussing all your things and going through the activities in here if say Wednesday, my kids, I know they're already not wanting to hear the story first thing, but they're ready to start with an activity. We'll do the activity. Come lunch, they will eat um, their lunch, and then I will read the story during lunch. So it still gets read throughout the day. Now, say for some reason we didn't read it at all, which is rare, it will be read as a bedtime story. As long as you read it throughout the day, I think it's okay. Um, I do recommend that you do read it every five days. Um, it's going to be very rare that they don't want you to read it, especially at this younger age. And if you, the pictures themselves are really catch eye catching, and they like it. So as long as you read it throughout the day, I think it's perfectly okay. Um, okay, so then you have literature here. So see how you only have three social studies things, but you can do these three things and in one day you can have that this it's a lot in one day i think or you can break it up and you can save um you can do just geography one day and save the discussion part for a later time maybe during literature or something which again this is literature what a classic story is and this is a great time since you are rolling it is a literature Based curriculum this is a great time to actually bring in the books and you can come back to all these details here and you know talk about maybe tell your kids what copyright is talk about what an author is talk about what a title is where it's found on a book um, the illustrator what it what he or she does um, maybe look up what other books they may have um, illustrated or wrote the same way and how they categorize books and I tell you that's great when kids know exactly what books actually entail and then maybe how to pick a title those are all things that you can do as far as literature as well with what's already in here so we'll have what a classic story is literature fiction again so this could be tuesday you can have literature tuesday there's some more there's a device repetition and uh, repetition a story about ping give me one second uh, we did this first year
Okay, yeah. So he enjoyed creating his own story using reputation. So this is fun. Um, younger students, like, so for my daughter, we did, um, she just told us a story, and we, and we talked about repeating and how she would be able to repeat the same story or same phrases along the story. We all, I did get some go-along books um, that had reputation in it because, like I said, I read pre-read the book ahead of time, and then I actually went through the whole um, section before we actually scored this so I knew what to get ahead of time so for like I said my younger one we did it um my son again at this point he wasn't writing it he did write but it was copy work but he was not writing writing on his own as far as to, like just write me a story um so whatever he did write I he dictated it and I, I copied it down so we and you can actually save that in a journal so that's something we're looking forward to doing this year as well as another way to save things oh um before I forget in the back of your manual, because that is one thing we do during geography. When we do our flag, it, the other thing we do, because we do our geography, find the location on the map, we put, we pin, well actually we glue, we glue, because what I do, I am I'm simple, cheap, and easy, any way I can do it for free is kind of my thing. Um, I wish I had a laminator, but I don't have a laminator. If you do, that's awesome. Okay, so these are story desks right here. So they in the back of the manual, you can make a copy of this on your printer. And like if you have, like me, I have four kids, so I'll make four of them. And I'll give each one um, a sheet and, or I'll cut them out. Prefix. For my oldest kids who can use scissors, they'll cut their own out. For the youngers, I'll do it. Then they can color it. And then if they want to make their own, they even have a blank sheet here. And they can make their own picture of what the story entails for them, what they like. So you take this little disc after you cut and color it. And uh, what I do is I put tape over it on both sides because, like I said, I don't have a laminator and I use, like, the cheapest method possible. And because I don't want to ruin my map, um, I put just regular scotch tape over it on both sides so it's clear. And then we glue um, the, what is it, the, the Elmer's glue, the stick glue, because it's, like, super easy to wipe off. Um, you just put a little bit on it and you stick it onto the location of where the story is. Hey, so on this one, we stuck it onto China. Okay, so let's go back. So that's what we do when we do locate China. We do put our story disc there. And then every year we take them off and we put a new one. So like right now our map is blank because we are starting this year. Um, we are starting with um, the little light, the little red lighthouse and the Great Great Bridge this year. So that's going to be our first book to look out for. Okay, so we did that one. So reputation and then art art is wednesdays um art is wednesdays here at my house because i also do tea time um during tea time is when i would read the story or during their art time is when i will also read the story now for art it's going to give you simple things for you suggestions of what you can do see and it'll even give you references here i'm scared page nine so it'll show you exactly what they're trying to tell and again this can be discussion for younger children if you want um for my kids what i end up doing and then here's a drawing water uh, okay drawing water and then um sometimes i'll tell you I'm trying to see if this one okay yeah so it does give you like exactly it tells you exactly what they're the details of like the waves and things on them and then you still have art over here as a viewpoint. You still have art as a uni medium, art as composition, again, discussion. But with these, that same day for activity, um, I will go through our book. I will pick one page. I did it for my littles. Um, for my old, Now that my kids are a little bit older, um, I will probably have them. They pick one page that they like. And when they pick the page that they like, they are able to recreate that picture. Um, I usually give them a choice between map colors, water paints, and then just crayons. It just depends on the story itself. If I see that it's a certain theme, though, in the story, like in the Little Red Lighthouse, I believe it's only three colors. In the page. Um, I can't tell right now, but so I'll try to have them influence that. And then that will be their picture that we end up saving that goes along with different things. So I do like that. Again, I wasn't very keen on that last year or the past two years. So this year, I'm really going to try to do that now that the kids are older. Fourth day math. Okay. So in some of the stories you will have, there will be a suggestion for math and some of them you don't, but that is cool. Do you need it? No, ma'am, I don't. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay, so have your student count Pink's family, including mother, father. Okay, so you count all of them, and there's definitely a lot of worksheets. If you're into worksheets, there's a lot of stuff online, Pinterest, and all that. I'm not a Pinterest fan, so I don't use it, but there's definitely a lot of blogs that will have this. But you don't need any of those. You don't even need to look online. All you got to do is look at your manual. It says, don't forget ping. Count them. Make them more fun. Have the students draw the students of all the pictures. Family surrounding ping. Some students might prefer tracing a duck template on a yellow thing. And so it give you suggestions on how you can use math. Okay, for this one, I specifically remember what I did. I did as the manual suggested. And we counted all the little ducks. Um, my son was in first grade at that age, but he could count very well already at that age. Um, we counted, he did count all the little ducks within the story. And then I would also for, um, pick a number and I would say, okay, go to page, go to page 10 and tell me how many ducks you see, or go to page four and tell me if you see how many people you see. And I would have him count, not just ducks, but people or boats or how many times was, was the river in the picture. And then when we were in, um, when we were in the stores, whether it was a grocery store or a shopping for sh uh, shoes or clothes or whatnot, if I would see a reference to like a duck or a river or anything, I would see them and I would r tell him. And I was like, look at how many are here and count. So it's a lot of, you can do that as implied math as well. And like suggesting here, you can get blocks, you can get coins, you can get little ducks. If you have rubber duckies everywhere, that would work well as well for applied math. Um, I don't think you need to add another math curriculum at such a young age, but if you do, for whatever reason, add it, um, you don't have to stick with it daily, but you have definitely enough applied, applied math here. Okay, so math, you can save that and do it with science since it's just one thing and it's applied. You definitely want to do it with another one. As you can see, you'll have science. Here's your animal kingdom. Of course, we talked about ducks in our science animal kingdom. We also talked... Um, we did as suggested on here we discussed we did visit our park and we did feed the ducks like it suggested we also looked at other animals who had the same body structure of a duck like as far as in buoyancy science health and safety as far you would have to read the story to understand the self us uh, health and safety part of it I'm not gonna ruin it for you right now um, but it's very suggested like I love this I love how they give us these tips here then another science project reflection of light again you can do um, it's showing you an example how to do an experiment you can always look it up but you don't have to because it is right here um, for you to do a simple experiment it's enough if you want to gather more than you're definitely able to do that okay and teachers note so here we go this is something else for added and that's it and that's how your thing is so we went monday tuesday we did wednesday and then we did thursday this was our thursday so friday is free um you could do you could break up your art here and have art friday since there's a lot of art in this one you can definitely do that i spent a little bit more time on that than i wanted to because i want to show you like here again you'll have your social studies down and i believe and until we did not have math can't see, but you'll have literature, we'll have art, and yep, you did have a little bit of math, and then your science was human anatomy, science, let me find one. Again, you'll start with social studies. So you can break up any of these to make it for all your five days, or you can keep the fifth day and just do a reading, and from that reading, maybe you can do a storytelling or whatnot, but I mean, the manual definitely suggests many things you can do if you don't want to do everything in one day this one does have math as well actually look you'll have three different ways to study math in this one not as many not many literature ones though right yeah see but you do have language okay so as you can see all of them will have either language art history is covered in the geography part of it you definitely pull that for um ping we did like i said we did china so we talked about um what was that what did my kids do? Oh, Kung Fu. My kids, that was their little um, activity they wanted to do was Kung Fu was theirs. Now, in here I have my folder, my binder. I haven't gone through this one. Um, I need, I've been cleaning out all my areas for homeschooling. Um, so I haven't done. So here we go. This is, um, this is Peter Rabbit. Like I said, I tried last year to try to keep stuff organized and keep keen on it, but I wasn't. So this year I'm definitely hoping for more. 
Um, here are the flashcards. So I was going to give you an example of the flashcards that we did. So it's very simple. We will I will put the word, put the definition, and on the back they will draw a picture of them. There are some of the worksheets, my worksheet kind of things that I did to study on them. I don't have many in here only because, oh, that's an activity they had. We fingerprinted their feet. That's that one. Okay, um, Al Moon, I found some cards um, to practice the Rodeo numbers. So that's how we did our math on those. Again, I didn't save a lot of stuff on this. This is just extra stuff that I saved. So when we re-row um, Al's Moon, yes, you can re-row because um, what... The fact that these give you suggestions doesn't mean you have the manuals, doesn't mean you have to do all the suggestions in there. And if you feel like they're a little bit too advanced or your child is not at that age where they comprehend that, you can save it and then reroll that book maybe the following year. So where they do understand it and it's something new all over again. There's Florent, this is um, Sweetbriar, Horse Sweetbriar, and Kent's Mountain. Again, oh, I think this one, this is actually our flag. And. Yeah, I have one of theirs there because I don't know why we got three flags this past year. But I actually have their flags all hanging up. Um, I will have a picture of that in the description. So, they see they draw their own flag. Like, the whole page is the flag there. You draw it, they'll color it. And that was my first grader. Or he was second grade, this one. We did this in second grade. Right. And then what I want to eventually do is this is going to be my folder to keep what's this year, the things that we're doing this year. So I got to go through this and get this removed from here. It's giving me trouble. I have one free hand here. There we go. Okay. How to make an apple pie. So and again, like I said, I don't, these are all things that I save extra copies of. Um, 